Hi, it's Margaret and thank you so much for joining me here on The Gardening Me. Today I am potting up tomatoes. Now this year I'm not growing a whole lot of tomatoes because I'm growing a whole lot of other things, but I am growing eight different varieties. Although I'm only growing one plant for each variety, other than one of them I'm going to grow two uh, because I do have nine spots for tomatoes. So I sowed the seeds on April 13th, so that's two and a half, three weeks ago, so they're still not big. I mean, they're still pretty small, but they're at the perfect stage to pot up. So while I'm potting them up, I'll also go through and tell you a little bit about each of the different varieties that I chose. I also think I might give you a little bit of a sneak peek into a couple of things that I'm growing, a few other seedlings that have gotten a little too big for their britches or for their pots. And I'm a little bit concerned because I don't really have the space to pot them up. I actually don't really want to pot them up because, you know, not only does it take a lot of space, but then you're dealing with, you know, having to get more soil and all that kind of stuff. Our last frost date is May the 10th, which is about a week um, from where we are today. I believe this is the third. And um, the annuals I'm talking about are tender annuals and those I generally don't want to put outside until closer to the end of May, kind of the third week in May, that kind of thing, a couple of weeks after our last frost date. I just don't know whether they're going to hold on that long. So anyhow, let's get to potting up those tomatoes. Okay, let me just get myself organized here. These here are all of the seedlings. I haven't thinned them out yet. Um, this is the pots that I sow them in. They're the two and a half inch pots. And I usually sow um, two to three or four seeds per pot, depending on how old the seeds are. So the older they are, the more seeds I'll sow. And so this one, as you can see, has three little seedlings in it. So at this stage, what I will do is I will just pick the nicest of the ones that are in the pot, and that's the one that I will pot up. Now, the containers I'm potting them up in. This is what I normally use. Here in Canada, Tim Hortons is kind of like the local coffee shop. There's one on every corner practically. And whenever we go there for a coffee, I usually get a large and this is the kind of cup it comes in. And um, I will rinse it out and then I will save it. And I keep a whole stash of these um, tucked away specifically for potting up seedlings like this. And the reason I really like using these are because they are really long, but they're narrow. So number one, I'm not using a whole lot of soil when I'm potting them up, but the second thing is that I'm getting the depth that I need. When you pot up tomatoes, you're going to be burying the stem. And that's kind of one of the little tricks of getting really healthy, large, um, vigorous transplants is burying that stem. Roots will grow all along that stem and you will have that much better of a transplant when you put it in the ground. And in fact, when you put it in the ground, again, I will take a couple of the bottom leaves off usually and bury that as well. Just gives you a much better, more robust plant. So when you're talking about potting up, the deeper I can get it, the better. The first thing though, before I do anything, is you can see these don't have any drainage holes in them. So what I need to do first is put drainage holes. Now you can use a drill if you want. I do it the low tech way. I have this screwdriver that I use for like all things gardening. As you can tell, it is no longer an actual screwdriver for screwing stuff in. It's a, um, it's one of those star Phillips uh, head screwdrivers, so it has a little point on the end, and it's perfect for things like this. So what I'll do is I'll take um, two or three, usually about three cups, and I will just poke like five or six holes in the bottom. And as I do this, I will turn down the volume a little bit because the one drawback of this is it kind of like one of those um, nails on a chalkboard kind of sound it sometimes makes. So but you can see it's super fast.
and there we go. So all of the cups now have holes in them. And next step is I am just going to fill them up with some soil. Now I don't want to fill them up with a lot of soil because like as I said, I do want to bury that stem. So depending on how big the seedling is, I mean look at this guy here, this is a huge seedling. Even if I buried it right at the bottom of the cup, it would still not you know, well, it would bury like this kind of chunk of the stem there, which is almost exactly what I want. But I do want a little bit of soil at the bottom as well. I don't want the, because if you look, the roots, is this one? Well, you can't really see it as well on this one. Oh, this one's a better one. The roots here are kind of coming out. And um, so I don't want to put that right at the bottom of the cup. I do want to have at least, I'd say an inch of soil down there an inch or more so i'm just going to i like kind of filling up all my cups at once sort of so i'm going to start with about an inch of soil in the bottom of these cups i have pro mix potting soil here that has been slightly moistened And then some of these I will have to add quite a bit more soil because they are a lot smaller. But we'll do it one at a time. This kind of just gets me going. Okay, that's done. So let's start with this one here. We'll start with the slicing tomatoes. This one here is Chef's Choice and it's an All America Selections winner. And it is a beefsteak type tomato, a flattened beefsteak. If I have photos of these um, and or footage potentially of some of the ones I've already grown before, I will put that up on the screen as we go along. This one I've never grown before. The interior has a yellow flush with pinkish red stripes. It is an indeterminate tomato and it's a pretty large one. It gets around seven to eight ounces and it's um, sweet with a good texture and to me actually texture is one of the most important things obviously flavor is up there too but texture is also very important in a tomato because I really don't like tomatoes that are mealy it's a bit earlier to mature than other large tomatoes and apparently each plant can produce about 30 fruits per season um, it is a hybrid tomato and the days to maturity are 75 days now when you're talking about days to maturity for tomatoes, they're always talking about the date from when you transplant it outside. So it is not the date from sowing inside, it is from transplanting it out into the garden until the time when you get your first fruits. I may actually take these and just split them apart and give them to a neighbor or something like that. A couple of my neighbors grow tomatoes. Let's get this out of the pot first. beautiful roots. I mean, this is the perfect stage to pot them up. As I said, these were sowed on April the 13th, so it's been about three weeks, I would say, two and a half, three weeks. So, of course, I'm looking at these two, and by the way, just as an FYI, I am a super messy potter upper. <laughs> I always make a huge mess when I pot things up and I get soil on the leaves and stuff, stuff like that, but it's fine. They don't mind. It all works out fine. So, but just as an FYI, because I'm already seeing soil on this leaf. <laughs> Anyhow, um, I will be potting this guy up, obviously. It is the larger one, beautiful thick stem. So I'm just going to gently separate these two. I mean, you will break some roots, but that's what happens. That's fine. Tomatoes don't really mind that too much. I'm going to set this one aside. And so now, other thing that I'm going to do is here we have the seedling leaves, the cotyledons right down there. I'm going to just pinch those off because I want as much stem as possible. And then I am going to put this one in here gently and just fill in around the tomato with soil. 
So, so the one thing you don't want, which is why I pinched off those uh, seedling leaves, is to have any leaves in the soil or even too close to the soil. I wouldn't have any leaves like right down here or anything like that. If there's a leaf right near the soil, I would pinch that off too. And do not forget to put your label back in. And there you go, one potted up. This, I mean, it's a nice looking seedling. It doesn't look that huge. I'll be transplanting this in about three weeks. You will see the difference in size three weeks makes. It is insane how quickly these grow, especially once they're potted up. The next one I'm potting up is also a new to me one, and this one is called Bread and Salt. This is a variety that I got from Baker Creek. I really don't know much about it. It is also a slicing tomato. It's a large tomato. It is indeterminate. It is 80 days to maturity. And it's a Russian heirloom. Oh, it's an ox heart type tomato. And what that means is that the tomato is actually shaped like this huge heart. It's very pretty. And you know, when I'm thinking about it, I don't think I've ever grown ox heart tomatoes before. So I'm kind of excited about this one. It has uh, dense, meaty flesh. It's great for fresh eating and for sauce. And the name, I thought when I first heard the name bread and salt, I mean, that's what kind of drew me to this tomato to begin with, that um, it was because that's, a great way to eat tomatoes is on a piece of bread with a little bit of salt. But in fact, that's not where the name comes from. The name comes from the traditional um, Russian custom of offering special guests bread and salt as a symbol of health and good fortune. Now, the next one I'm doing is this guy. This is a salad tomato. I'm only growing one salad tomato this year, and it is called Purple Zebra, and it is also an All-America Selections winner. And this one has dark red fruits with green stripes and a deep mahogany interior. So for this guy here, I am going to take, they're both pretty good looking seedlings, but I'm gonna take this one, which is the taller one. So just take that off. So more about Purple Zebra. This one is a rich tomato with complex flavors and a moderately firm texture. And the taste, they say, is sweetly acidic, but it leans more towards the sweet rather than the acidic. And in trials, it had a thinner skin than the other tomatoes they were comparing it to. Um, one of the interesting things about this one is that, um, well, there's a couple of things. Firstly, it yields about 150 to 200 fruits per plant. I mean, that seems like a lot, <laughs> especially for a salad tomato. Like, that's not much, or no. You know what? Even for a cherry tomato, I think that's a lot. For a salad tomato, that's insane. So we'll see. We'll see if that actually happens. Um, the other amazing thing about this is it has incredibly good disease resistance, including resistance to late blight, which is really the disease which I think strikes fear in the hearts of basically all tomato growers. So this one is a hybrid and it um, is indeterminate. It's 80 to 85 days to maturity. Now we're gonna move on to the paste tomatoes and these are the ones that I have the most of. And um, well, the most of, they're not a lot, there's only three, but <laughs> they're the ones that I have the most varieties of. So the first one is Striped Roman, which is also known as Speckled Roman. I actually tested last year, I had a Striped Roman tomato and another one that was called Speckled Roman, and to me they looked identical. So I wasn't sure whether there was a difference between those two, but doesn't seem like there is. Um, it's an open pollinated variety, and um, as well, it is indeterminate. It's a medium-sized paste tomato. 
Um, it gets four to six ounces per tomato is like kind of the average. And I have three beautiful seedlings here. See, when they're like this, it's really hard to choose which ones, but I think I like this one here because it has such a thick stem on the bottom. I don't know if you can see that. That one, nice thick stem. So I think I'm going to go with that one here and just pinch that off. And now I'm just going to kind of go like this. And you know what? I think I have too much soil in this cup here because I want to bury that stem nice and deep. There we go. And there we go. So um, more about striped Roman. It's um, a compact plant, even though it is indeterminate, and it has a pretty good yield. I wouldn't say it's a high yield, but it's pretty good. The claim to fame for this one, though, is the tomatoes are just gorgeous. They're red with these beautiful gold stripes. It's a, ugh, They're so beautiful. Um, and the other thing about them is even though, I mean, technically they're a paste tomato, I really enjoy them fresh as well in sandwiches and stuff like that. They have an amazing flavor. So there is striped Roman. The next paste tomato I have is one of my all-time favorites. It is called Amos Coley. And here are my seedlings. I am, let's see, this guy here. Oh, this is too small. I'm not even gonna bother with that one at all. Um, but these two, let me just take a quick peek. I think I'm gonna go with this one here on the end. So Amos Coley, I've been growing this one for quite a few years. I grow it every year. It is a huge paste tomato. I'm sure I have photos of that one. It's not the prettiest, I gotta say. It's not the prettiest tomato because it does tend to crack along the shoulders and it also kind of tends to green along the shoulders as well. So not the prettiest tomato, but definitely a keeper because it is so productive and it tastes really really good the tomato itself is very very meaty it hardly has any seeds in it a very small core if any and yeah it's just an absolute favorite um it's i think it's a variety that's like really old too. It's like 100 years old or something like that. It's an indeterminate tomato um, and it is an heirloom and it is 80 days to maturity on that one. So the next one here is Chico 3. This tomato variety is one that I got the seeds um, for when I went to Portugal back in 2018. So it's been five years. I still got, you know, decent germination on it although I think I sowed a whole whack of seeds in here because I wasn't sure whether or not I would get that and um, I did look it up and it does appear to be an open pollinated variety so what I want to do for this one is I'm actually going to be saving the seeds for this variety and what I do when I want to save seeds for something is I'll actually create an extra tag here that says save seed and I put it right with the plant just so that it kind of reminds me during the summer that um, I should be bagging potentially. Not all tomatoes need to be bagged when you're saving seeds because it all kind of depends on the flower structure. I'm not really sure how the flowers are on this one. Um, but um, anyhow, this at least reminds me that I need to save seed for this one. Now, let me choose which one there's four in here. Oh, this one looks pretty. This one looks good. Let me see here. These are really kind of squished together. So in this case, I think what I am going to do, instead of taking it apart, what I'm going to do is just remove um, with clippers here the ones that I don't want. I think they're too squished together. Mm, this one looks nice there. This one, oh, okay. I'm gonna, sometimes you just have to make a decision and this one doesn't look too bad. Mm, this one has a thicker stem, a longer stem. You know what? I'm going to go with that one there. Okay. So, so Chico 3. Oh, look at the roots on this guy. This one is 70 days uh, to maturity. 
and it's not very large. It's more of a San Marzano kind of um, looking tomato in terms of size as well. And its productivity, though, is insane. It is one of the highest producing paste tomatoes that I think I've ever grown. It is crazy. And on top of that, it has great flavor, which really is, you know, the main point here. So great flavor, amazing production. I haven't seen these seeds in North America, so that's one of the reasons why I really want to make sure I save some so that I can keep growing this because just like Amos Coley, which I've been growing for a very long time because I love it so much, this one I think is going to continue to be on the annual rotation every single year. So let's put this here. Okay, so that one is done. So there's only two left. Okay, you know what I realized? I realized I just goofed up because I was so enthusiastically talking about this that I forgot I wanted to grow two of the Chico 3. And of course, that's the one that I cut this off. <laughs> so what am I gonna do? Okay, so this is what I'm gonna do. I am going to take one of these and I'm going to try to root it just like that, like a stem cutting. I'm going to put it in the soil and see what happens. Just to be on the safe side, I'm going to take one of the Amos Coley seedlings here. I believe this is Amos Coley. And I am going to pot this one up to as my ninth. Um, I've never, I know a lot of people do root these cuttings and I think it should be fairly easy. I've never done it myself, so I don't have any experience with that. So I'm going to take this cutting. I'm just going to use one of these little guys here and fill it up with soil. Whoops. And make a little hole in it. And I'm just going to put the cutting in there. I'm going to have to make a label for that as well. And um, I will water that in in a sec as soon as I'm done. And so here I'm going to take the other Amos Coley. and just put it in place. That's what happens with me anyway, when I'm talking and working. I'm thinking too much about what I'm saying and not enough about what I'm doing. <laughs> and for this, I'm just gonna write on the side. That's one of the great things about these cups. These cups are basically one use only though. Well, technically two uses. First use is when I actually drink the coffee. Second use is when I use it for the plants. But once you use them for plants, they're basically garbage after that. But So I'm just going to write here, instead of making another label, Amos Coley, so we're good to go on that. I am, however, going to make a label right now, before I forget, for this little guy. And this is Chico 3. And there we go. Okie dokie. So let's get back to it. There's only two more to pot up. And these are um, the two cherry tomatoes. The first one is Reason Traub. And this one was such a delight last year. This is a tomato I purchased the seeds for like years ago, five, six years ago, something like that. And um, they never germinated. I actually wrote a blog post about that on my blog. And so I, every year I would sow three, four, five seeds. Every year I would not get any germination on them. And so last year I just said, you know what, this is ridiculous. I'm throwing the entire packet. I don't know how many were in that packet, maybe I don't know, 20, 30 seeds. And I just threw the entire thing in and thought, hopefully, I will get these seeds to germinate because this is also a variety that really isn't that um, readily available 
so it's one of those things that I wasn't sure whether I could even get it again, and I really, really wanted to try it. Um, Riesentraub is a cherry tomato, and in German, it means giant bunch of grapes, apparently. Um, it is an heirloom from Germany, and it has really beautiful flavor. It's sweet, but it's not too sweet, and it has just the tiniest little bit of acidity on it, and it was also one of the first ones in the garden to ripen, so that's always a big plus, because that first tomato of the season is always, ah, uh, it's so amazing. So anyhow, um, I got a bunch of seedlings to germinate last year, and so what did I do? I actually isolated this tomato. This tomato was in a separate bed than my regular tomatoes were, just to ensure that um, I would be able to save seeds from it easily, and that's exactly what I did. I saved seeds from that, and now I am growing from my own seeds, which FYI have no issues germinating. So happy about that. Anyhow, so that is Reason Traub, and um, this one is 76 to 85 days to maturity. It isn't indeterminate, but I grew it in one of those kind of larger square metal cages, and it worked out just fine, and I'm actually thinking I might do the exact same thing again this year. Last but not least is this cherry one. This is a new to me variety and it's called Artisan Tiger Stripes. I got this one from Botanical Interests and it is as well, I think all of the tomatoes I'm growing are indeterminates, so it's an indeterminate as well. And it is 70 days to maturity and it is a large cherry tomato. The tomatoes are those kind of long oval kind of tomatoes um, they're about two inches long and they are reminiscent of blush tomatoes which I did grow last year and I really really liked um, but they are crack resistant and I did have a few issues last year with blush cracking um, although there was a lot of kind of weird water issues happening last year so I haven't written off blush by any means because of that. Blush was a red kind of uh, tomato with sort of um, yellow streaking on it. This one though comes in three different colors. You can get it in green, pink, or gold. What Botanical Interests does, which I really, really love, is they actually color code their seeds. So if you look at the seeds, you will see seeds that are different colors, and those will tell you what kind of tomato that will become. And that's amazing because one of the reasons I often don't like mixed packets of things is because you don't know what you're going to get. And when you sow something, you may end up getting four or five of one particular color and nothing of another color. For this one, I'm actually not sure what color I picked. I did write it somewhere in my notes, but I should have written it on the label. And here you go. They are all potted up. And last thing I'm going to do is water them in. Now, whereas I do like to bottom water um, all of my seedlings, especially when they're in the smaller cell packs and things, you can't really bottom water, even if this was a solo um, cup where there's no issue with it getting kind of soggy and stuff if you start like putting it in water. I find anything taller than this, and even these are sometimes a challenge, are sometimes difficult to bottom water. So I will often end up top watering them. And in this case, I am watering them in with a diluted um, kelp fertilizer, which is what I usually do with all my seedlings. When I pot them up, I'll water them in with a little bit of diluted fertilizer. The only one I'm not going to do this to is the one that's the stem cutting. That one I'm just going to water that with plain water and uh, see how it goes. So now these are just going to go under the lights and they are going to continue growing and becoming gorgeous and uh, yeah, in about three weeks they'll be going outside. Okay, so when I was talking about things going a little crazy, look at this Nicotiana. I sowed these guys way too early, I think. I've potted them up a couple of times, but they're humongous. 
they're in these, I think these are four inch kind of tall pots. And yeah, like, I don't know whether these can hold on another, like, two, three, I think three weeks until I can get them outside, potentially. I don't know. We'll see if the weather starts turning a little bit earlier, but I'm a little bit worried that they're going to start suffering. I could pot them up into one gallon pots, but I really don't want to because that is a lot of soil. There are a lot of plants in there. Here are a couple of the coleus, which are also doing good, but I do have another set of coleus that I've actually pinched already. Look at these guys. There's more uh, Nicotiana going crazy. But these are huge. And actually, I pinched, you can see here, a couple back. They were ginormous. And I'm trying to root those cuttings. But these two, this was from a rainbow mixed packet of seeds that I got from a neighbor. But these grew ridiculously big compared to the Kalocha Sunset and Sun Coral Candy. And those are up here. And these are, they're a good size. Like I'm happy with the size these are. They're not too crazy. This one here is the Kalocha Sunset. And I have a tiny pineapple wizard here from some really old seeds and only one germinated but here we have the sun coral candy doing beautifully looks amazing again it's still in these cell packs and as far as i can see i think i'll be fine leaving them in there um, until I transplant them outside. So those are good, but these are looking a little droopy. These are the cuttings that I took from the um, much larger rainbow blend. I'm sure they'll perk up, hopefully. <laughs> and here are some marigolds as well. These, again, I don't know. I've grown marigolds for so many years, but these seem to be a lot bigger. Maybe it's because it's different varieties than I've grown before. That's probably what it is. These seem to be a lot bigger than um, I've had before. We'll see how they do. And the other one that's a little too big as well are these Gomfrina. I really don't want to pot them up. I may have to. These, again, don't go out for another three weeks. And to me, I'm looking at that and thinking, that's a good transplant size. So I'm not sure. I may end up potting these up into those four inch pots, depending on how they're looking. If they don't look like they're suffering at all and they're kind of just putting on a little bit of growth, then I'll leave them. But if I start seeing them kind of start to suffer and decline, then I'll probably end up potting those up. So here's the thing with potting up. When you pot up, you use bigger pots, which take up more space, use up more soil, but in the end, you get larger plants, which is awesome. The thing is, you kind of have to balance that because if you don't pot up and you keep things in smaller pots, well, that means you get more plants in the same amount of space. You're not using as much soil, but of course, your plants are gonna be smaller when they get outside. So you kind of have to figure out what's more important to you. And in certain cases, for certain plants, I want them bigger when they go outside. And in other cases, especially with plants that grow pretty quickly, I really don't need them to be that huge. I'd rather have more of them growing rather than fewer in larger pots. So that's sort of where I fit in when it comes to potting up versus not potting up. I kind of do it on a plant by plant basis. You know, how much room do I have? Do I feel like potting up? Am I okay with putting a smaller transplant outside and having more of a particular kind of plant? I'll have to keep an eye out for the long range forecast and just see if I can potentially get some of these things in the ground a little bit sooner. I'm thinking I'll probably start hardening them off in about a week and um, then I'll keep an eye out on my long range forecast. And once I see that the weather is probably not going to be dipping out in the you know seven to ten day range i will get them in the ground and cross my fingers so that's about it for today thank you so much for joining me here and we will see you next time bye